The Los Angeles Clippers were once the laughing stock of the league. Then this happened. Here comes Chris Paul. The lob. Let's go! Oh, what a monster jam by the Andre Jordan! It's the end of the 2009 NBA season. The Clippers are coming off a season with 19 wins, 63 losses, and not much to hope for. The Clippers are projected for a top three pick and end up with the number one overall selection. In the past, they haven't really had any success with the number one pick. So there was clearly a major chance that they would not make a good selection. With the first pick in the 2009 NBA Draft, the Los Angeles Clippers select Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin was a 6'10 athletic big man coming out of Oklahoma who was ready to shock the world. Although, in true Clippers fashion, Griffin broke his left kneecap in the final preseason game, causing him to miss the whole season. By Griffin on the feed from Telfair. They're at the other end, cherry picking though. In the meantime, the Clippers went 29 and 53, received the eighth pick in the draft, and selected Alfarik Aminu over players like Gordon Hayward and Paul George. So that goes to show you the Clippers' drafting abilities. There was a lot riding on the season. The Clippers were getting clowned because their number one pick had not yet played a single game in the league, but the rest is history. Blake Griffin took the league by storm with highlight reel dunks and bringing the Clippers to relevancy. Blake was a shining star, and he solidified that in the 2010 All-Star Weekend. Clippers! Blake Griffin! He started it with a bang. Sam Cassell, come here! He jumped it too high that time! This is his seventh try. Okay. Get in the building. Gotta get us in the building. 50, sometimes even 35. He gonna be scared you got your shirt off. <laughs> that's your that's your stripper name. But tonight, this car is nothing but an obstacle. It's not over. We also have a special guest for this dunk. Here he is right here, Baron Davis. <laughs> oh, man. It's the 2011 NBA Sprite Slam dunk champion is Blake Griffin. This threw him in the spotlight. Blake was a bona fide star after this. He went on to play in the All-Star Game and end his weekend with a W. He also went on to win Rookie of the Year, averaging 22.5 points, 12.1 rebounds, and 3.8 assists. By the end of the year, Griffin's success didn't lead to much more team success. They won three more games, but young players like Eric Gordon and DeAndre Jordan also showed bright signs. And when the New Orleans Hornets were shopping around superstar point guard Chris Paul, they knew they had a chance to be a very good team. At first, it looked like Chris Paul was going to the Lakers, but the commissioner vetoed this trade, leaving room for another LA team to swoop in and steal him. In the race between LA teams to land super point guard Chris Paul, it's the Clippers, not the Lakers, landing their man. Eric Gordon, Chris Kamen, Alfred Aminu, and the Minnesota Timberwolves first round pick from 2012 draft were being sent to New Orleans for Chris Paul and a couple of second round picks. Thus, the birth of Blob City. 
Foul line, bounces to Blake, Haynes inside and powers it in. Chris Paul lob it, the rim to DeAndre and he powers it down. Chris Paul, one of the most creative passers and best ball handlers in the league. Blake Griffin, rising superstar and reigning slam dunk champion. DeAndre Jordan, seven foot monster who jumps out of the gym and protects the rim at all costs. This trio was going to be the core of Lob City for years to come. Now in the wing, balls for the screen, two-man game, Blake Griffin explodes on Gasol! They instantly were way better, going 40-26 and 26 in a shortened season and making the playoffs as the fifth seed. They had an incredible series against Memphis, which went to seven games, but the Clippers pulled it out. In the next round, the Western Conference Semifinals, they were swept by the number one seed Spurs. What if I told you that that was the furthest they'd ever make it in the playoffs? Oh, you don't believe me? Stay tuned. Big expectations were set for this team led by Vinny Del Negro. The Clippers went out and signed some role players in Jamal Crawford, Grant Hill, and Matt Barnes. This paid off as the Clippers were 56-26, and 26, the fourth seed, and four games back from the first seeded Thunder. Once again, they played the Memphis Grizzlies in the first round but this time they had home court. After a hard-fought six games, the Los Angeles Clippers fell to the Memphis Grizzlies, who went on to the Western Conference Finals. This led them to fire Vinny Del Negro and send a first-round pick to the Celtics for their coach, Doc Rivers. With two superstars in Chris Paul and Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan also coming into his own, a new coach in Doc Rivers who had coached the Big Three in Boston, and the Los Angeles spotlight, the Clippers had huge expectations for this year. In the offseason, they went out and signed Darren Collison and traded for JJ Redick. The Clippers did not disappoint during the regular season, going 57-25, and 25, solidifying the third seed for them. In the first round of the playoffs, the Clippers faced off against the six-seeded Warriors, beating them in a hard-fought seven games. Leading up to a highly anticipated matchup, against the second seeded Thunder. By no real surprise, the Thunder defeated the Clippers in the conference semifinals. Not many moves were made in this offseason, but most notably, during the season, the Clippers traded for Doc Rivers' son, Austin. The Clippers managed to end up with a 56-26 record and the third seed in the West again. In the first round of the playoffs, the Clippers beat the Spurs in seven games. Green. And went on to face the second seed in the Houston Rockets. First round, average 13 a game, a double double for him. Inside, knocked away by Howard. In game one, the Clippers beat the Rockets 117 to 101. In game two, up 1 0, the Clippers fell to the Rockets 115 to 109. Heading back home with the series tied 1 1. The Clippers knew they had to take advantage and win the game. Now up 2-1, with the possibility of making it 3-1 in Game 4 before they headed back to Houston, the Clippers could not let this slip. They blew out the Rockets by 33 points and held a 3-1 lead with all the momentum. Only a handful of teams have come back from the 3-1 lead. Heading back to Houston with the Rockets having no momentum, it looked like the Clippers would finally overcome the semifinal curse. With all the momentum, the Clippers laid an egg, losing 124 to 103, but were heading home with a 3-2 lead. The Clippers hoped to close out the series because they did not want a game seven after leading the series 3-1. At home, the Clippers were killing it, building a 19 point lead in the second half. Then this happened. Teammates, Paul got back as was Griffin. Comes up top to TJ, oh no, TJ up top for three, he hit it! To Jones on top, back to Ariza, shoots a three, looks good, and it is. Boy, Terry, to Ariza, thought about it, comes around a Howard pick on Jordan, the runner knocked out of his hands. Jordan trying to save it, does in the corner, Brewer for the Smith song. At the last moment, now steps back, shoots for three, got it! Oh, Terry, right hand corner, Josh Smith again for three, yeah! Through, put it up, terrible shot, missed it badly, rebound Smith, Rockets can tie with a two, regain the lead with a three, here's the bounce pass, oh, Smith to Brewer! To Terry. Gets double, jump pass in the corner. Brewer for three on the lead, yes! He did it! Monday. Brewer to Terry for three, got it. How about that? 
The Rockets come from 19 down in the third and win here in LA to force a game seven in Houston on Sunday. Yes, the Clippers squabbled a 3-1 lead and played right into the narrative that the Clippers have never performed in the playoffs. It felt like the Clippers were never the same. They couldn't recover after losing this 3-1 lead, but they kept trying. They ended up losing game seven in Houston. After losing the 3-1 lead, the Clippers went on and signed NBA legend Paul Pierce, who was on his last legs. In the 2016 season, the Clippers went 53-29, earning the fourth seed. In the first round, they faced a surprising Portland team, who upset them in six games, led by Damian Lillard, who was snubbed in the All-Star game, a breakout star in CJ McCollum, and their former number eight overall pick, Al Farika Minu. River, Rivers, three on the way, it's short! And the Portland Trailblazers on to the second round. In the 2017 season, the Clippers were on their last legs as a whole. It was Chris Paul's contract year, basically a make or break year. They had their casual regular season, going 51 and 31, and securing their fourth seed, earning them a matchup against the Utah Jazz facing them up against Gordon Hayward before his injury and a 90-year-old Joe Johnson. Of course, in true Clippers fashion, they lost in seven games. Chris Paul made it clear he wanted to leave Los Angeles, and instead of re-signing with the Clippers, Chris Paul signed a new contract with the intention of being traded to the Rockets. Joining us, the Rockets have reached an agreement on a trade for the Clippers CP3. Rockets send Sam Decker, Patrick Beverly, and Lou Will to the Clippers. Thus the unofficial end of Lob City. The Clippers re-signed Blake Griffin in the offseason as he was to be the face of the franchise post Chris Paul era. After a 25 and 24 start, the Clippers pulled the trigger and traded Blake Griffin to the Detroit Pistons, to everyone's surprise, leading to the official death of Lob City. Now, Chris Paul is still on the Rockets and has been riddled with injuries. DeAndre Jordan is with the Mavericks and is averaging his worst points per game since 2013 and the most turnovers in his career. The Black Dirk is finally here, guys. <laughs> and Blake Griffin is having one of his best years yet, statistics-wise, but it doesn't feel the same. He was almost on top of the world in LA, being one of the most popular players in the league. But now in Detroit, Things are not the same. In the end, the Clippers from 2012 to 2017, better known as Lob City, were a transcendent team. Their games were so entertaining due to all the high-flying dunks and overall athletic plays, all orchestrated by the maestro, Chris Paul. It's a shame they could never get past the Western Conference semifinals.